Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be looking at the Toyota Tacoma that has the 4.0 V6. This one's a 2014, so this is kind of on the tail end of the 4.0 V6 in the Tacoma. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Carl Malone Dodge here in Heber for giving me some time with this Tacoma. I'll include a link to the website in the description down below. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Now, powering this Tacoma is a 4-liter V6 that goes through a 5-speed automatic transmission. Could get these with a manual as well, which is really cool. Anywho, 236 horsepower and then 266 pound-feet of torque. So not quite as much as the tail end of the 5th Gen 4Runners when it comes to power, but still solid figures. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you can see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, when it comes to looks, this generation of Tacoma, I think, is a good-looking truck overall. I like the little fake scoop on this. You know, obviously not functional, but adds to the aesthetic. And then the larger headlight design. This one also comes with the fog lights. You can see everything's painted here at the bottom, so it gives it a kind of more premium appearance. Now, this one does have an aftermarket tire and wheel setup, a little bit of a bro-dozer setup. Looks like it's got Bilstein shocks, though, which is nice. It's always a nice setup to do. And then you guys can see here with the giant fender flares, got the Tacoma badge there on the side. And the overall proportions of this, again, I think are great. Like, look at that. I think that looks great. And then taking a look at the bed, looks like this has a composite setup. It's not too bad, not too bad. You can see the TRD Sport decal, kind of old school looking. And then again, this taillight design on this generation is pretty sharp looking. So overall, you know, not quite as futuristic looking as the new Tacoma, but I think it's actually aged very well on the exterior. And what's definitely aged really well is just certain things like the door handle feels so solid. Like Toyota needs to just go and open the doors on some of their older cars so they can remember what not plasticky stuff feels like. Anyways, really nice trim here. And then you can see with the cloth seats. And mid-size pickup trucks, so not a massive amount of space, but it's got some space. It also has a cup holders. But, I mean, just listen to the closing sound too. It's solid, so solid. Same thing with the front door. It just sounds solid. It's not plasticky and hollow sounding like the new ones. Anyways, nice trim there. You got all your window controls here. Let's quick look at the mirrors. That's what the payload is on this generation. 1,040 pounds. <laughs> More payload than, what would, what would it have been? The third gen, if I remember right? Quick look at the front seat. By the way, this truck hasn't been detailed yet. For just to mention that. Got your mirror adjustments and everything. Look at that, we got a, some some modern tech in this. Got some modern tech, nothing too crazy. Solid. And also, look at this. Just have a simple two-speed transfer case. Nothing crazy with that. And then it does have the uh, key that you get to stick in the ignition. But mostly analog gauges, again, these have aged well, I think. Kind of has a cool retro look to it now. And then I love this design of steering wheel for the Toyotas. They carry this over for quite some time in the Forerunner, obviously, with like the stock there in the back and some practical controls in the front. But just a nice setup in general. And then, yeah, back when we didn't have massive screens, this is just so refreshing, I think. Got the shifter here for a select. <laughs> and again, they just, everything just makes sense with how it's situated here. And then with the center console, how do I open this? Oh, it's on the side. Interesting. Does this have the, no, just the one side opens it up. But yeah, I mean, this trim's nice. And if you're wondering, I almost forgot to mention, mileage on this is just over 60,000. So not crazy high miles. Um, but yeah, you got like sunglass holders. Looks like two, what the heck, two of them. Again, another thing just makes sense. These obviously have held their value really well, just like all Toyotas, but the biggest thing is going to be the driving, so let's take it out and drive it and see how the 4.0 performs. Gotta put the key in the ignition. <laughs> Safety first with the seatbelt too, of course. Okay, let us set off in this 4.0 Tacoma. It always confused me why Toyota got rid of the 4 out of the Tacoma. Like, they kept it going in the 4Runner and just improved upon the engine. 
Whereas with the Tacoma, it's like they went to that 3.5 V6, which is still a reliable engine, but boy, oh boy, did that engine suck when it comes to gear hunting because of the six speed and then the power just never feels good never feels good those 0.5 liters of displacement they ruined it <laughs> they ruined everything with the truck but yeah initially setting off ah uh, now the 40 v6 especially with this tuning not the fastest engine but it has this kind of like low-end grunt to it that you just don't get out of the smaller displacement V6s. Now, something to note, this truck does have some modifications which do mess with the driving a little bit compared to like what a stock one would drive like. Um, like you can feel it with the suspension and that, that is the one thing to note. Um, even the best aftermarket parts, given enough time, will make a vehicle not drive as well uh, long-term compared to, and this doesn't drive bad by the way, I'm just saying compared to stock. And that, that's the price you pay with the aftermarket world is, you know, once you mess up that stock suspension geometry and everything, it, especially with Toyotas, yeah, it seems like it kind of derails quite a bit. It's not horrible though. I, I know it might sound like it's like, oh, the worst thing ever, it's not, it's not that bad. It's just something that I'm noting with how this handles and everything compared to a uh, stock Tacoma. But this is also when the steering was heavier. This has so much character to it that I really appreciate. And this is a nice example. It's only 60,000 miles. I mean, <laughs> this is going to make us all feel old, right? But, I mean, we're almost getting to the point where this is, I mean... Actually, no, it already is. It's already 2014, 2024. This is already a decade old. Crazy, right? So this is already 10 years old. So that means this person drove less than 10,000 miles per year with this truck, which that is not super high mileage. Let's see how this can... Oof. Yeah, I got to get into it. <laughs> Again, it's not the fastest. That's not what these are known for. They're known for bulletproof reliability. It actually rides pretty darn well. Despite the aftermarket stuff. Tires are a little bit noisier. That's to be expected though. Yeah, I like it. It's a strong performer. And it just feels, the biggest thing is this just feels solid. Super, super solid. I guess I'll just go past this person. And it, it feels solid in a way that, the, and I, I say this as a person that owns a more modern Toyota. My, my wife has a 2020 Land Cruiser, which I, I feel like that's probably the last generation of well-built Toyotas, I'm just being honest. Uh, and then we just got a, we just bought a 24 Land Cruiser for the channel to do a series on. And I'm just telling, like this feels way better built than that Land Cruiser we just bought in terms of just how solid everything feels. And this isn't like a fancy package. This is pretty base in terms of the interior, but Toyota just built things differently back then. Like the sole goal was just reliability, durability. Uh, whereas now, you know, Toyota's kind of doing some luxury stuff and they are going fancier with some stuff. And then obviously, you know, more economical powertrains. And that seems like the big focus with Twitter right now is they're focused more on economy rather than the reliability and durability and that's why they're doing the turbocharged engines and the hybrids and all of that which I don't have a problem with hybrids the turbo engines though I do have a little bit of beef with but all in all this generation of Tacoma is very attractive uh, I think it's modern enough that you don't have to concede much when it comes to driving dynamics but then it still has enough of Toyota's old school tech that it is going to be just bulletproof, right? You're going to be able to put stupid amounts of miles on this completely worry-free and, and, and everything just holds up well. Like again, this, the Toyotas from the late nineties until right before the pandemic, well, when I say right before the pandemic, I'm talking about before this new generation of turbo Toyotas. So pre-turbo Toyota, but you know, late nineties, that 
that area for Toyota is just peak Toyota because that's when everything is modern with the performance and you've got a lot of good looking cars too in the batch. You've got a lot of capable cars when it comes to both on-road and off-road driving. And then on top of that, they just, they're so well built. It's like Toyota, that's I, that's where I, I feel like most of Toyota's reputation has been built is over that uh, period of about 20 years. And so it'll be interesting to see what the next 20 years does to Toyota's reputation. But for, as for me, like, you know, we don't need a, we don't need a car right now, but in the future, when we need to buy another car and something, you know, I don't know, maybe when we get rid of that new Land Cruiser, because I don't know how long I'm gonna keep that for, we'll see how long that lasts. I'm probably gonna get another Toyota from this era. I'm still debating on what it's gonna be, whether it's gonna be another 200 series, a 100 series, because I do like the Land Cruisers quite a bit, or if it's gonna be a fifth gen 4Runner, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think that this is just, for a lot of manufacturers, especially for Toyota, this was kind of the peak. And it seems like now things are going uphill when it comes to fancy tech, like the screens and everything, but downhill when it just comes to like normal stuff like this, like just a little handle, super well built. And then it just feels 10 years old. This has no rattling and it's 10 years old. And I review brand new cars that they creak and they rattle. Like I just reviewed a $160,000 Mercedes the other day, GLS 63. That when I do this with the door, you can kind of hear a little bit. And then when I grab on the grab handle, it would kind of pull apart a bit. And then, yeah, when you close the door, it's just, they don't build cars like they used to. That's all.